you know, I, I try and stay positive on this channel, but like y'all a bunch of babies sometimes. What's up? My name's Chris Tejas. I'm a photographer and videographer based in Ontario, Canada. I mostly shoot portraits, weddings, events. If there's a person in it, I'm tending to shoot it. This is going to be a minute. This is going to be a minute in the world of this YouTube channel where I just kind of go off because I try and keep it positive. I try and be lighthearted. I try and be happy. I try and not make a big deal about things. But sometimes I see something that really just gets me. And uh, I don't know, maybe it's the like, that like angry Latino in me comes out and I gotta, I gotta respect that. I gotta honor that. I gotta honor my ancestors. I gotta yell at y'all for a minute. I'm not gonna yell, I'm not gonna yell. I wanna talk for a second about YouTube camera reviews and about people who are for and against them and about a specific video I saw recently. I made notes because I knew that I would get heated and I knew that this would be the best way to keep myself on track. Recently, I saw this video of this guy. He's a not super well-known YouTuber, but he's got like 11,000 followers. He was reviewing the Nikon ZF and he was talking about it and he kept saying over and over at the intro, partway through, halfway through, all the way through, the whole time he kept being like, now I'm talking about being a photographer, not a YouTuber, not one of those YouTubers who pretends they're a photographer. I'm talking about being a real professional photographer, not one of those YouTubers, not one of those. He just kept saying it over and over. And guess what? Yeah, this was an old white guy. And it was just exhausting to listen to because he was discrediting people that were doing the same thing as him. He was on this platform talking about a camera. And as he was doing that, he was immediately discrediting other people, going so far as to say that some of them that say they're a professional photographer are lying. What the fuck is that, man? Grow up, grow up. So I'm gonna break down a few things here and follow along with me if you're feeling like getting spicy. What qualifies somebody as a professional photographer? That's an important consideration here because this guy's talking all about being a pro photographer and what that means and why you should listen to him but you shouldn't listen to other people. So. What makes somebody a professional photographer? Uh, for, for me, for, am I a professional photographer? Uh, that, that's a question you might have to answer for yourself because it seems like there's no kind of like dedicated answer, but here's some arguments for why I am a professional photographer. I have gotten flown to places to take photographs. I have been commissioned to travel and paid for taking photographs in other places. Uh, people pay me every week to take photographs and make videos and to do work for them. I pay taxes on that work. I have companies reach out to me to work with them because they see that I am making work and they like the work I'm making and they want me to make it for them. Does that make me a professional photographer? I, I, yeah, yeah, it sounds like it does. However, I also still have a part-time job. I work one day a week at a running store. Part of the year, I work as a grip in film on sets. I don't touch a camera that entire time that I'm on set. About 80% of my income comes from my photo and video work and the other 20% comes from other jobs like film work and working at the run shop. So does that make me a non-professional photographer? Well, maybe, maybe it does. What qualifies somebody as a professional photographer in your eyes? And everyone's gonna have to answer that for themselves when it comes to who they're gonna trust. But it sounded like this dude was basically saying if somebody has a large YouTube platform and that is their main income, they are necessarily not a professional photographer. And it's just fucking lame. Grow up. The other big question you have to ask yourself is like, why does it somebody need to be a professional photographer to make a camera review? Let's talk about who camera reviews are actually for. I think camera reviews are for the hobbyist. The reality is most really professional, professional photographers I know, you, you, you look at a spec sheet, you see, okay, I'm looking for a new camera. What specs do I need? What camera satisfies that? You talk to some people you know who own it. You maybe get in touch with the reps because you might have a relationship with them because you're a professional photographer, right? So you talk to the reps, you go to the stores, you try it out, maybe you rent the gear, and then maybe you watch some YouTube videos just to confirm certain things like, okay, like, this has this setting, does this work the way I need it to, stuff like that. That's how the pros are going about buying gear. So who are all these reviews for? Now, I'm not saying reviews are a great thing. There's definitely something janky about some of the situations you see in reviews. Certainly they're a part of the marketing machine and that's, I mean, there's something about that that's not great, right? But what I'm saying is that like the hobbyist is who is in mind for these reviews. Now, 
if I'm a hobbyist, if I'm trying to decide on the next camera I wanna buy for my hobby, do I wanna hear what a professional studio portrait photographer has to say when I'm gonna use this to shoot my kids' birthday parties, uh, my travel stuff, I'm gonna go shoot some landscapes, some architecture, my dog. Do I really care what a studio portrait photographer thinks about this camera for their niche? No, I don't. I don't. I don't fucking care what they have to say because frankly, what they think matters does not matter to me. So the reviews that you're seeing by these like so-called like non-professional photographers are actually probably more valid for the vast majority of people watching them. So when you're up on your high horse saying like these people aren't professionals and so should they be making these reviews? Not everything is for you. Hey, I know it's hard when you're an old white guy. I'm a young white guy and I have to reckon with that too. Not everything is for me. Not everything is for you. So when you see a camera review by a YouTuber and you think, oh, well, they're not professionals, don't watch. It's not for you. It's for people that want to hear what somebody like them has to say about a product that they're considering buying. It's also a question of why we even watch camera reviews. I think there's three big reasons. The first one is people like tech. Tech is interesting, tech is fun. If you're in this world, you probably like learning about what's new and what's interesting, right? Totally fair. Do I need a professional photographer who's been doing it for 40 years to tell me about what's on a spec sheet? No, because the specs are the same. Whether you're a professional or you're an amateur or you're a hobbyist or whatever, you, wherever you fall in the spectrum of being a photographer, the specs of the camera don't change. So somebody who's really good at understanding specs and talking about specs and presenting them is more valuable than like this like seasoned professional photographer who probably doesn't actually understand how a lot of that stuff works because they don't keep up with that stuff because they think that these YouTubers are bullshit and they don't want to hear what they have to say. Yeah. So you don't need a professional to give you reviews if you're just looking at it from a tech perspective. The second reason we might consider is because we're trying to make a purchasing decision. Okay, if you're trying to make a purchasing decision, you're probably gonna read a bunch of reviews, you're going to watch reviews, you're gonna learn about the specs, you might try and contact people who've tried it, you might ask questions. These are all valid things to do and they're, they're helpful. And you don't need a professional photographer to answer those for you. You need somebody who has the answer to your question. A lot of times the professionals are too busy actually working to be able to get into the nitty gritty. So like if I wanna know how the you know real time LUTs work on this Lumix S52X because I wanna play around with that. I'm probably not gonna ask the DP who is constantly shooting in log, uh, who doesn't have time to, to learn how all that stuff works because it doesn't fit into their workflow. I'm gonna ask a hobbyist who's gotten deep end into it because they spend all their spare time playing around with their camera. That it's actually more helpful. So it's okay, not everything's for you. And finally, I think people just like, like to confirm their buying decisions. People watch reviews even though they already own the camera, which is interesting, right? Like you'll own a camera, you'll see a review pop up and you'll watch it because you wanna see, okay, are they having a similar experience to mine? I love this camera, does this person love it? Is that legitimizing my purchase? that part's all fine and dandy, whatever, whatever. It doesn't matter. Like getting so caught up on this bullshit is just like, it's exhausting. And if you can just sort of like step away from it a little bit and recognize that like not everything's for you, you're going to have a better time in life. And these old fucking photographers yelling and screaming, you know, what's crazy. Everything in the comments of that video I was talking about of this dude who did that review was all angry. The people who were like, yeah, I totally agree. They all looked like him. They all looked like him. And, and, and I'm gonna look like him one day too, right? So I gotta be very aware of this bullshit. So then what is the minimum for a review? What do we want out of somebody who's giving a review? I think we should differentiate between like reviews and like breakdowns of, of the camera. So like to me, a review is a real world, like I've used this camera, here's my thoughts after using it on a few different areas. Uh, as opposed to like, a breakdown of that camera and looking at all the specs, talking about all the specs, doing a bunch of tests on all the specs, that is a different form of review, but that's not the kind of reviews that I actually like find super helpful for me. I wanna hear what real world people are saying about using this camera in the field or this lens or this lighting or whatever. It doesn't have to be somebody who has you know a huge following. It doesn't have to be somebody who's a professional. It just has to be somebody who's spent the time with the camera. So. I've started doing some camera reviews. I'm trying to do this thing where I'm doing like camera reviews that are less than like seven or eight minutes, right? That means there's a lot I'm not going to say. 
I'm gonna keep it to a bare minimum of talking about the things that I think actually matter. Not gonna talk about specs, not gonna talk about the nitty gritty, just an overall feeling that the camera is giving me after using it. So my bare minimum for reviews is that I've used it for several different shoots, whether they're paid or creative, that are in very different styles. So whether it's like portrait shoots, event photography, video doing like several different types of video, that's the bare minimum for me. I wanna make sure that I've used this in several different situations and I have pushed it in ways that I needed to push it to get the job done that I wanted to get done. I wanna feel confident about my experience and about my uses with the camera. I don't have to have used it for everything the camera is capable of. I wanna be confident about the things I'm gonna talk about and how it fits into my workflow so that if there's anyone out there like me that has a similar workflow, they can see how this might work for them. And finally, I just wanna feel confident that I can translate that information effectively and quickly. And you, you can't do that when you've only spent a day with a camera, I don't think. Now, if you've spent a few weeks, a few months, a year, you can get a very thorough review, but it doesn't mean that that review is necessarily gonna be more helpful to somebody than a review where you've had a shorter time span, but you can really effectively communicate what the camera has done for you or has you know, not done for you. Last section here. Why are you so concerned about pro versus YouTube? Why does it matter to you so much? Why do things have to be the way you think they ought to be? Here's a few things I wrote down here. I think that professionals are concerned when they see something on YouTube where they feel like there's a bias due to monetization. If that platform has a lot of followers and they can put out a camera review, make a bunch of money off of the clicks, make a bunch of money off of the views and the like sponsorship and all of that, people get concerned that there's going to be bad information put out there. That's a legitimate concern. Totally fair. I agree with you. I think a lot of this stuff that's going on is like turning people just into sort of like an arm of the marketing world and uh, you become kind of a shill, I guess. And, and I, get, I get that that is a concern. I totally agree. You're concerned that they have a more vested interest in selling someone on a product than on actually giving them really good thorough reviews that are gonna help them with their purchasing. Why else are you a little bit concerned about the whole pro versus YouTube thing? Are you a little bit scared? Are you scared? Are you a little bit scared that people are eating your lunch? Are you worried about that? Because all of these like super cool young YouTubers are starting to actually get real work. They're getting agencies reach out to them because they want them to do work for them. Now, if you're confident in what you do, you won't be worried about that. You won't care because you know that you'll get good work based on your portfolio and based on your contacts. This is just a different way of coming up. Things aren't like they used to be. When you were coming up, you know, you pride yourself on being like somebody who's been shooting for 40 years. Cool, that's awesome. Problem is, it's not 40 years ago and young people have to do this in a different way and YouTube and Instagram and TikTok, that's the way we gotta make our fucking rent. So like, calm down. Let people do what they gotta do. Don't get in the way of somebody else's meal ticket. And that kind of hits at a deeper thing here, which is like, there is a changing of the guard. You are starting to get into the age where you are feeling less relevant. And that's tough, right? You controlled things when it came to the photography world for so many years, if you're that like, that older photographer who has been doing this for a long time, has made a really good living, you've had it good. New people are coming in and that is uncomfortable. You can either embrace it and you can see it as a new form of media and you can appreciate the changes that have happened or you can rally against it. But here's the thing, and this is really fucking important to remember, YouTube was about breaking down barriers. I mean, YouTube itself was about making money, but YouTube as a concept reduces the barrier to entry so that regular people can start interacting and creating and making things and sharing things. And that's a good thing. You don't have to like everything that's out there, but if you're gonna be on YouTube talking about this just like you were in your video, you better accept the reality that YouTube is for everyone. It's not just for you because not everything is for you. You know, I'm actually kind of proud of myself. I thought I was gonna swear a lot more in this video. I think I kind of held it together. Man, I, that video really got me though. I, I can't handle it. I can't handle people being that way. Just, you know, it's crazy too, uh, without giving too much away who this is. His bio is basically like, be good to people. Where'd that come from? And do you follow that? Because it kind of doesn't feel like it when you're making shitty ass claims like you were in your video. I don't know. 
Maybe I'm just on one today. Peace.